Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel for a new video. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a follow-up to the unboxing video that I posted where I took a first look at the Soundbrenner Core Steel, the wearable watch metronome that I've got on right now. So in this review video, we're gonna start off by talking about if I liked it or not, and some of the applications that I can imagine this working really well in, or some of the ones that it didn't really measure up in. Then from there, we'll go into each individual feature and I'll talk about how that worked out and if I enjoyed it or if it didn't really work for me. So talking about whether or not I like this product. Overall, I would give it like out of 10, like a five, maybe a six. That's not the greatest score. That's like three stars. So the thing about it is this is a great product. I just don't see the why. I mean, I think a lot of you guys sort of hit me with that question out the gate when I posted the first video because I read the comments on both the video and the little snippets of the video that I posted all my socials. And a lot of people were saying the same thing, which is like, why do you need this? Or I bought it and I couldn't really find a application for it. I didn't really understand where I was going to use this and, and what makes it special. That's kind of where I came to, but I'm a YouTuber. I'm doing a review of this. I really need to dig deep and figure out where we could actually use this. And I came up with one scenario in where this makes a lot of sense. Now, maybe when I break this down, it'll help you guys to understand some other applications for it that you might think of just going off of this scenario that I'm going to explain. And that is the following. So basically the one thing that I thought this would be a fantastic solution for is if you're an acoustic act, let's say, or, or if you're a band for that matter and you're playing an acoustic show. So if you're a group of guys and you're going out to a coffee house or you're playing an acoustic show at some kind of expo or something's going on where you're not going to be using all of your equipment or you don't have enough equipment to be able to have a click track in your ears. So if you're an acoustic band, you're never going to have a big backline rig. You might not ever sort of venture into the inner space and you might never have a click in your ears if you're just doing like a local circuit with you and your friends. This watch makes a lot of sense for guys in those situations. The reason why I say that is because this watch on the app, now I didn't actually get to test this because I only have one of them here, but it looks like on the app, you can actually sync multiple core steels or pulses or any of the Soundbrenner products to the Soundbrenner app and then press play on the metronome and then they'll all be synced playing in time at whatever BPM you selected on the phone. So one phone can drive multiple units. That's pretty cool if you're an acoustic act that's never gonna own in-ears, you know, or you're never gonna run wireless in-ear rig at a show in your local coffee house or whatever it is. Cause you can throw on a couple of these, maybe there's three of you, you can sync them up, press start on the app, and now all of you are in time with one another. Maybe you know that, okay, the first song in the set at 60 beats per minute, so we'll press play on 60 beats per minute. Finish the song, then you just pull out the phone and you switch to the next desirable tempo for the set. Now, you don't even actually have to switch yourself because you can do a lot of programming with this guy where you actually can upload set lists or you can sort of just drop in how many bars you need this to click for so that it'll work in time with your set. That's the biggest place that I can see this being used and really serving a great purpose. Outside of that sort of scenario though, I can't really figure out what I'm gonna be doing with this, right? I'm a drummer, so when I go on stage, it's with a full band and we're gonna have a backline rig and I'm gonna have in-ears that are cabled running down the back of my shirt that's gonna be connected to a laptop or some kind of rig that is running backtracks, right? Because in 2020, it doesn't matter if you're in metal or pop or country, most acts at a certain level and up are getting on stage with backtracks and that means you have to play in time with those tracks. And if you don't all have in-ears, then you have to at least play in time with the drummer because then the drummer will have the in-ears with the click that's connected to the track, keeping you all synced up with that backtrack. So for me, I'm just gonna be listening off my in-ears. Now, there is some functionality with this device that will allow you to tether it to the Ableton Live interface. So you can actually use this and sync it up to your click in Ableton. Ableton is a really great DAW that also serves as like a, a live DAW. It's kind of designed to be uh, more of like an EDM DAW so that you can take it on stage. There's a lot less issues with crashing when it comes to Ableton in comparison to people going on stage, running Cubase off a laptop, running Pro Tools off a laptop, or running Logic off a laptop. Ableton's really like the live DAW. So this does pair with Ableton and then you can sync this up to a click. So I guess even in just talking this out with you, I kind of uncovered another application, which is if you're a guitarist and you don't have an in-ear setup, but the drummer's got the in-ears and he's synced to the back tracks and maybe you want a click as well. Well, this would be a really quick way of getting a wireless connection to that DAW and run a click that's also attached to the click that's keeping the drummer in time and then you can just kind of feel that tempo a little bit better. Now, as far as being a drummer and actually practicing with this guy, there's a couple things that I noticed. First thing I did was sit down at a practice pad and just went through some basic rudiments trying to stay in time to this. I noticed right away that it actually wasn't that difficult to stay in time to. It wasn't really much of a difference between staying in time to a click in your ears or staying in time to something that's on your body vibrating. Actually, it was pretty easy to make the adjustment and I had it almost right away. That being said though, I found this. If you're wearing the leather strap and you're a 
drummer and you're trying to practice with this guy, it's not really gonna work. The leather strap, because there's no give to it, it's kind of fixed at a certain tension to your arm. Therefore, there's a little bit of space where sometimes you might miss a click or two. But on the contrary, you can strap on the silicone strap like I have right now, and then you can really crank this guy. So that's what I've had to do. If I wanna practice with this and feel every vibration over my own vibrations that I'm creating by the impact of the stick to the pad, then I have to make sure that it's the silicone strap and it's cranked nice and tight. Cause you can get it pretty tight with the silicone strap cause there's give to it. And that way you really feel the vibration through your arm. I tried some of the other straps on this as well cause there is like a body strap where you can mount it to your chest and there's a smaller version of that strap that you put around your leg or maybe your ankle. I gave those guys a shot and it was a little bit easier for the chest. The leg I didn't like as much when I was at the kit, but for the, for the chest right in the center, you can really feel it there and I, you never sort of lose it. There's no like, because your chest isn't making contact with the instrument in the case of drums, you don't actually sort of have anything that's disrupting your ability to feel that vibration in the center of your chest. And it's actually kind of cool. It feels kind of weird being at your chest, but like it, it helps you kind of feel the music a little bit better. So that's something I did like. So I guess to sum up this first part of the review, I found some uses for it, but nothing that really drove me to say that this is something every musician needs. I just don't see the application in it when you can just put a click track in your ears and play to that. However, if you fall into any of the situations that I described, if you don't have the money to get it in your rig, but you want to drop some money on this guy, well, even saying that, it's kind of silly because this is like a $450 product. At least that's what it is here in Canada. I'm not sure about the USD exchange rate. I don't know. So if this is cheaper than grabbing in-ears, then maybe go this route. If, you're, if your band specifically is using Ableton and you can sync to it and you can have this in time to your drummer and to the backtracks and you want to go that route, then yeah, maybe that makes sense for you. The acoustic one, I think, is the big one that a lot of guys could actually use this for. Moving on, let's talk about each individual feature of the watch and whether I liked it or didn't and whether I actually found use for it. So the first thing I kind of covered already, and that's the metronome. So we'll just move on from that. The next thing on the actual interface, moving from left to right, is the tuner. I attached the tuner to the neck of one of my acoustic guitars and used it and it worked. There was no problem there. Actually, that made a lot of sense to me. I have a watch on. I can just twist the watch. The little guy pops off. The, the core itself pops off. I put it on the neck of the guitar and I can tune. That was pretty cool. But does it justify buying a $450 smartwatch? I'm not sure. Let's keep moving on. So the tuner works. Works like they say it does. And there was no issues. The next thing moving left to right is the decibel meter. I tried this out a couple times. Yeah, very cool. I have a show coming up that I'm going to next Tuesday. When I go there, I want to see if this is actually going to do the thing it says on the box where it's always listening to the environment and warns you when it gets too loud. If it does, if it works out like that, that's pretty cool. I can see a need for that for sure. However, I know that the Apple Watch has the same feature. I don't think it's native to the actual watch, but I think there's an app you can get where you can make the Apple Watch do the same thing. And they're actually kind of similar in price point. Moving on from decibel meter, the next one is just a timer app. Having an athletic watch or having any watch with a timer on it definitely has its applications. I used the timer a couple times for food. Like I boiled eggs one day and I didn't have my phone with me and I was wearing the watch. So I was like, okay, I'll do a timer for this. And that worked out. No big deal. It's just a timer, right? It makes sense. The other thing that the timer can be used for in your own practice is if you just have the timer running while you're doing an exercise. So for me, I used the timer a couple times to count down exercises. But what I found was that like I had to actually remind myself a couple times. So my iPhone or something, there's a lot of things with timers on them that's near me when I'm practicing. My electric kit has a timer. The laptop that I'm listening to on has a timer and my iPhone has a timer. So this is the fourth timer in that whole little setup. So I actually found myself a couple times reaching for the iPhone and being like, oh no, I don't have to do that. I can, I can just use the watch. And maybe in time, I would just get much more in the habit of going to the watch first. It took a little bit of reminding because the iPhone's just always there and you can talk to Siri and ask Siri, hey Siri, set a timer for whatever, which is something I do often when I'm practicing on my own. The next moving left to right and the final feature before we just hit the settings panel is the stopwatch. Same thing as the timer. I have stopwatches on lots of stuff near me, but having this on my wrist at all times, I might be able to find use in that in the future. One thing I'm thinking of is right now in Canada, there's tons of snow on the ground and I'm not running outside. I'm doing treadmills, but I like long distance running in the summer a lot. I'm going to see about wearing this guy on my runs and then I can actually get an, a really accurate time of how long it's taking me to do the route that I do. So that's kind of cool. But again, is it worth the money? I'm just not sure. I'm just not sold on it because there's a lot of cool stuff packed into this, but there's no real specific need that I see it addressing yet. Now, the last and final feature that I want to talk about is uh, a little 
little bit of a disappointment. On the box, it said as of December 2019, there's supposed to be a firmware update that makes it so you can pair this device with your smartphone and get notifications on the device. And that would have been really, really cool. I couldn't figure out how to get that going. I don't know. I checked out a thread on the FAQ section of Soundbrenner's official forum that was talking about this update and where to go and do the actual firmware update. And I couldn't even figure out how to do the firmware update in the app. The button that was on the UI that they were claiming was there on the site just wasn't there for me. And like, it's one of those things it's like, yeah, maybe I could have spent the time and dug deeper and looked around, but why isn't it done? Like, why can't I just press update and have the functionality work? Or more importantly, why doesn't it just come out of the box ready to pair with my smartphone and show me my notifications? To sum up this review, I like the product. I like the things it's offering me. Is it worth getting this over another type of smartwatch like an Apple watch or some of the Samsung products? I'm really not sure because it's really not delivering on the main aspect of why you would want to get this guy to have a wearable metronome. There's just no sort of wow factor when it comes to using this over a regular click that is going to encourage me to spend the amount of money that they're asking for this device. I really, really wanted to love it. I thought it was such a cool idea when I saw it online. When they shipped it out, I was so thrilled to get my hands on it. And then they asked me to do an honest review. So this is my honest review. Will I stop using the product now? I don't think so, but I didn't have a watch that did all the stuff that this does in the first place. There's a lot of watches for a lot cheaper that have timers and stopwatches on them that I could have already owned that this wouldn't necessarily have really replaced. But because I didn't have any product like that, I probably will use this going forward for some of the applications that I described. And maybe this will work a lot better for you at home with your own performance schedule. And maybe you're in a situation like some of the ones that I described where this is going to make a lot of sense. Because I really do believe, even though it's like a very niche environment, like it's a very specific part of the music industry that's going to be doing acoustic circuits with friends that need to pair up that don't want to buy in-ears that are down to spend 450 CAD, I guess it's like 300 or so USD on a smartwatch to be able to sort of sync with each other. That's like very niche, like I said. However, if you fall into that specific category, then yeah, maybe pick this up. Maybe look at some of the other products. I know that they have the Pulse, which is a cheaper version of this, and it just has the uh, the actual vibrating function to it. Like it's, it's just the, uh, the metronome itself. So maybe check that guy out. Last thing I'll say before closing out is this really is a beautiful product in a lot of ways. I just need some reason why I need it, why I have to wear it, why I have to spend that money for me to recommend this to people. Thank you, Soundbrenner, for sending out this product. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to leave a special thanks to all my patrons. Their names have been scrolling on the screen for you. These individuals really help make videos like the one you just watched possible through their ongoing support on Patreon. So thank you for supporting this channel. Lastly, if you'd like to connect with myself further, you can do so at my social media pages. There are links on the screen for you right now. And as always in the description below, thank you so much for checking out this video and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.